Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that follows stupidity down a dark alley that stupidity never comes out of. Today, in episode seven of Flurfs Are Idiots, we're having a look at M. Benz. Now, M. Benz has failed to make any real kind of impact within the Flat Earth world, but he's still one of the most deluded Flat Earthers that I have come across. And to be honest, I found it really, really hard to go through his videos. I'll explain why later, but I think I need some help with this. Hey, Creaky. And we get a... Oi, Michael Stipes. Bertha with a video. Sorry, I wasn't watching myself on YouTube, honestly. I'm going to need your help with this one. So if you can tear yourself away from watching your own channel for 10 minutes, you know, NASA doesn't pay you to slack off. So stick around for the stupid. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of M. Benz, where normal people are called heliocentric enthusiasts and everyone is lying to you. M. Benz tries to pass himself off as the place to go to for flat earth facts. Oh, you know, that actually hurts saying that. He even includes the word quality in his titles. But I see M. Benz as more of a budget flat earther. You know, when you go to the supermarket and you've got the name brands and then you've got the supermarkets brands, but then you've got the supermarkets budget brands. Yeah, that's M. Benz, the budget brand of the Flat Earth universe. Let's take a look at his first ever video. The music. Oh my God, I found the source of the YouTube premiere music. M. Benz, you're gonna regret this. This is M. Benz. Welcome to my channel. I'm here to bring you folks some quality Flat Earth video. As you can tell here by the Gleason's map, that's going to be the main subject I'm going to be covering in my video. Wait, hold on a sec. I'm here to bring you folks some quality flat earth videos. As you can tell here by the Gleason's map, that's going to be the main subject I'm going to be covering in my videos. That's better. All right, carry on. Subject I'm going to be covering in my videos. I'm going to be covering a wide array of topics, covering top fives, questions asked and answered, dispelling some of the myths about the flat earth, and some myths about the globe. Also, whoa, holy jump cut, Batman. Fuck's sake, hold on. <clears throat> okay, go on. One of the main questions that I get asked every time I talk to someone about the Flat Earth is why do you believe in Flat Earth? How can you believe the Flat Earth? It's a fair question. You're a grown ass man. Why the hell do you believe in the Flat Earth? It's because I myself tried to debunk the Flat Earth. Hey, well, M. Benz, I'd like to know how you tried to debunk the Flat Earth. Did you do any research? Did you do any studying? Did you do any experiments? Or did you just not understand something and give up and then become a flat earther because debunking the flat earth really isn't that hard i can do it every proof of the globe earth i couldn't i couldn't find any solid proof of the globe earth okay let's stop there and have a look at those images of the globes there's many reasons they all look different they're from different distances different cameras and different techniques for taking the images Take this, the famous 1972 blue marble image. This is a full image from one shot of the Earth and shows the Earth from the viewpoint of the astronauts traveling to the moon. It was taken by crew member Eugene Kerman using a 70 millimeter Hasselblad camera with an 80 millimeter lens. Now take this image. NASA released another blue marble image titled Blue Marble 2012. Instead of Africa, this one shows North America and is from a composite of images taken on January the 4th that year. To get this image, the satellite Tsunami NPP, using its infrared visible light imaging sensor, took over 15,000 images during six orbits over eight hours. This is why this guy Puppy. says it's photoshopped, because it has to be, because he had to put the images together. He placed the viewing point 2,100 kilometers above North America. 
Now, this image from 2015 was taken by the Discover satellite using the EPIC Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera from 930,000 miles away, which is why North America looks smaller. I hope this clears up why things can look different when taken with different cameras, from different angles, from different distances away. I mean, this stuff is really not hard to figure out. Come on guys, what else do we have? Another topic is water. Water cannot curve. I've never seen water curve or stick to a ball. Water, this old argument, see, this is why M-Benz is the budget brand. It's just the basic flat earth nonsense. The fact about water that most flat earthers refuse to accept is that the natural physics of water, as they put it, is to conform to forces acting upon it. Yes, you're right that water is level, but level means perpendicular to gravity. So if water always finds its level and level means perpendicular to gravity and water conforms to the forces acting upon it, that completely explains how water can conform to the outside of a ball because of gravity, you fucking retard. So that was his first video. Let's look at one of his more recent videos titled Ridiculously Easy Flat Earth Questions Answered 1. This is Zim Benz, back with another video for you today. Now, today, I think I'm starting something a little different. So, let me explain. I've been getting a lot of comments of, or questions, comments, concerns, whatever, from global believers who say they cannot believe in the flat earth. No budget, Benz. It's not that we can't believe in flat earth. It's that flat earth is fucking idiotic. There's zero evidence for a flat earth. And the evidence that you guys think you have is not evidence. It's just you really misunderstanding things. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. We've heard it a million times. Blah, 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 blah. I get it. But it can't be that we've heard it a million times because I'm still getting these same comments of people saying, why can't I see Mount Everest from my house? Why can't I see England from my house? Why can't I see what, whatever, the Great Wall of China? I get all kinds of ridiculous comments that you would think are pretty basic by now that have already been answered in many other videos. The reason you can't see the Great Wall of China is because China's around here and you're around there. There's a massive fucking planet in the way. Clear your mind. If you're a heliocentric enthusiast, clear your mind. Stop believing in right now that the earth is this big giant ball of fire. And there is the reason I found it so hard to go through Budget Benz's channel. The condescending tone, the backhanded insults, the heliocentric enthusiast comment, which is just really looking down on us. And it's the smarmy way he says it. He actually thinks he's smarter than us, than everyone else. And he looks down on normal people. But more importantly, the sun is not a ball of fire. No heliocentric enthusiast thinks that. What a stupid thing to say. Time to go to a remedial classroom. All right, class, that's enough, settle down. No, no mind of God, just put your hand down for the last time. You are not swapping seats with Phuket word. I don't care if you think it will make the class more orthogonal. Now, you need to pay attention, mind of God, because I've heard you talk about the sun before. Now, the sun. The sun is not three to 5,000 miles above us. It's not small and local. The sun is not an interdimensional portal. Mr. Thatcher, this one's for you. The sun is not on fire. There is no oxygen in space, so there cannot be any fire. However, the sun is 93 million miles away. The sun is powered by nuclear fusion. And the sun is a nearly perfect sphere of plasma. So plasma, the sun isn't fire. It's mostly plasma. And plasma is a state of matter alongside solids, liquids, and gas. Plasma is a highly energetic state of matter, so energetic that electrons are able to leave the atoms. It's estimated that 99.9% .9 of the visible matter in the universe is made of plasma. Okay class, that's all for today. Before you go, remember tomorrow is sports day and for the three-legged race you need a partner. You only have two legs each. You know what, I think I've had enough of m particular brand of stupidity for now. Creaky? Barry, fight the flat earth. Are you ready for me? Okay, so let's talk about m -Benz. Righty ho, so for those of you not familiar with M Benz, although I can't imagine there's going to be that many people, M Benz has a YouTube channel trying to provide flat earth facts, which is a bit of a contradiction in term, since the earth isn't flat, 
There can't possibly be any facts about it. But anyway, the most worrying part about M-Benz and his YouTube channel is the fact that this guy has kids. Those poor, poor children. Now, to my mind, if your parent is a flat earther, you're screwed. So let's have a look at the way M-Benz handles the flat earth and his children. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's M-Benz, back with another video for you here today. Here to talk about something that, that may speak to some of you. Here to talk about kids. Kids and flat earth. And this is where my problem with M-Benz begins. Kids and flat earth are two topics that should definitely, definitely not be put together under any circumstances. Now I have two daughters, two older daughters. I have a younger daughter, but two older daughters, eight and ten, third and fifth grade. And I get asked all the time, do you talk to your kids about flat earth? Is this something you should talk to kids about? No, it's not. Let's just go ahead and dive right into it and touch on this subject. Maybe I can shed some light about kids and flat earth. No. So, the way I feel about kids and flat earth is, I mean, it's not something you should pound into your kids and tell your kids not to do their homework or don't listen to your teachers or anything like that because I want my kids to be successful in school. Yep, that's a good point, M. Benz. So, completely forget everything you know about flat or think you know about flat earth and certainly don't talk to your kids about it but at the same time kids are not dumb nowadays especially my kids they aren't dumb <laughs> if you're speaking to them about flat earth i find that difficult to believe one day we're going out and we're just taking a walk to the mailbox and my kids are like well dad i look up in the sky and i see the sun and the moon and it's daylight how come I see the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time? I learned in class that, you know, the sun beats down the earth, covers half the earth at one time, and that's daylight. And then the other half, the moon is at, you know, it's nighttime. Moon, nighttime, sun, daytime. I sat down, I showed them a couple videos, a couple ODD videos, a couple of D Marble videos. Showed your kids ODD videos and D Marble. I don't really know what to say to that. I didn't beat it into them. It's not something I told them they had to believe. Okay, and that's fair enough. But you are their dad. If you tell them something, it's true. Kids believe what their parents tell them. So if you were filling their young, impressionable minds with the idea that there's even a possibility that the earth is going to be flat, then that's what they're going to believe. You're turning them into mini M. Ben's morons. I didn't say don't believe in your science books and things like that. Not just yet. Just because I believe, like I said, kids should get good grades in school. They, I mean, that's one of the earliest science things they tell you about. It's a globe. The indoctrination is strong. And there's the magic word, indoctrination. Not education indoctrination now as long as i put a little bit of nuggets in my kids head at a time so that way they don't get super sucked into the indoctrination i'm happy and then when they get old enough and they want to start doing their own research then they they're free to do their own research and believe in whatever they want to believe in yeah when they grow up they will do their own research and they'll find that the man they look up to the man that helped give them life is a complete moron and has been filling their heads with nonsense while they've been growing up. They're gonna hate you. They're gonna be embarrassed of you and they're gonna be ashamed to admit to any of their friends that you're their dad. I don't believe in pressing my beliefs onto my kids. Uh, wait, yes you do, because you've just said that you speak to them about the flat earth. If you don't wanna push your views onto your kids, don't ever mention the earth being flat, you idiot. But I do believe kids are the future. So I believe if we can stop the kids from becoming indoctrinated and and believing in all the sciences and the Neil deGrasse Tysons and the Bill Nyes that maybe we might have a future. Okay, so if we teach our children to not believe in some of the greatest minds of our time, then we may have a future. I don't think I want to be part of that future, sorry. No, I definitely don't. Maybe, maybe not for me in my generation, maybe my, maybe my kids' kids. Maybe they can grow up knowing all the deception that's going on and knowing it's something that hey man if i don't believe in this then at some point they gotta stop the lie what lie you oxygen thief at some point if i don't believe that i live on a spinning rotating ball that i can nor detect feel see get any hint of 
maybe, just maybe, you know, we can make the world a better livable place because maybe my kids' kids' kids, one day, they'll all know, maybe be common sense in the world, that we live on a flat plane. So, I thought it was important to make this video because I haven't seen a lot of flat earthers talk about this subject. Now, if I had to guess, I would say, M. Benz, that the reason you've not seen any other flat earthers talk about this subject is because they'd be embarrassed to, because they know deep down that the earth isn't flat. And trying to push that knowledge onto your kids, it's, oh my God. I just want to touch on it briefly, just give you my opinion about it and tell you that I think it's something maybe we should just kind of, you know, teach our kids here and there, not, not shove it down their throats, not force them to believe this, but just throw a little, I just throw little nuggets out here and there. Sometimes when we're driving, sometimes when we're doing things. The other day we went to the state fair and we were up high on the Ferris wheel and I, I pointed out to my kids, so look, do you see any curvature? And the kid's like, no, dad, it looks flat. What? You were on a Ferris wheel and your kid said, no, dad, it looks, of course it's gonna look flat. How high is a Ferris wheel? Haven't you got any, I'm no scientist but I also like to think of myself as relatively intelligent. There's, you're not high enough, you dick. So, I mean, it's just something I throw out when I see certain things. Again, I don't want them going to school, getting in trouble, telling their teachers, oh, my dad said the earth is flat, I don't believe anything you say. I don't think it's that you don't want your kids getting in trouble. I think you don't want them being bullied and made fun of, and quite rightly so. Because if a child was to go to school and say that his dad said that the earth is flat, kids are mean. Kids will pick on other kids for the tiniest reason, and the flat earth would be the cherry on the cake. Because again, I don't want my kids getting in trouble at school. I want them to do well in school. And I know it's part of the indoctrination, but they still have to make it out of school. I mean, I did well in school, I made it out of school. And again, I've been a truth seeker my whole life. <laughs> a truth, sorry, a truth seeker. Well, I hate to tell you this, M. Benz, but you have failed miserably because you seem to truly believe that the earth is flat. Okay, that's it. I apologize if this segment seemed like a little bit of a rant. It kind of was. I've got kids myself, as a lot of people watching this will have. And the idea of this guy pushing a flat earth belief on his children, it just disgusts me. <sighs> anyway, I've got a YouTube channel as well. The Creaky Blinder. I'm sure Fight the Flat Earth will be kind enough to put some links to my channel down in the description or maybe up here, up here, down some, somewhere. Um, I'd love to have you as a subscriber for more videos like this, which aren't always as ranty as this, but what can you do? Fight the Flat Earth, back to you, pal. Thanks for that, Creaky. I bet you guys didn't know the lead singer of R.E.M. had a YouTube channel, did you? Make sure you go and subscribe to him. Now, M. Ben seems to have all the standard flurf arguments, but there is one thing I haven't really heard him say. <sighs> NASA, NASA, NASA. <laughs> Hold on. What's his issue with NASA? And today we're talking about NASA yet again. I don't know why that just became a theme of my videos because they keep doing stupid stuff. I don't know. It... <sighs> you, you don't know what? Maths? Physics? How to do dot to dot puzzles? Earlier last month, earlier in August, they launched a probe to get close to the sun. Okay, so Budget Benz is talking about the Solar Parker probe which in my humble opinion is one of the most amazing things humanity has ever done. The Parker Solar Probe is NASA's robotic spacecraft currently on the way to the sun. It will get within 4.3 million miles of the center of the sun, which is practically in our star's corona. At its closest approach in 2025, it will be traveling at 430,000 miles per hour, which is 0.64% the speed of light. It has a memory card which contains the names of over 1.1 million people mounted on a plaque and installed below the spacecraft's high gain antenna. The card also contains photos of Parker and a copy of his 1958 scientific paper predicting important aspects of solar physics. So what is Budget Benz's problem with this? Whatever, you can launch probes. I guess you guys have to show some work for the billions of dollars you guys get paid per year. Fair enough, I'm fine with that part. 
Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, just, just two secs, all right? Uh, whew, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, hey, NASA, it's fight. Yeah, thanks. Um, the bonus check. Yeah, yeah, I got that, thanks. Um, look, just, I want you guys to know because I know it's been on your mind, it's been worrying you, but M. Benz says it's okay with him if you guys launch probes. Yeah, I know that's been worrying you loads, so you're probably really happy about that, yeah? Brilliant. Right, crack on. See you later, guys. Bye. Photo. Someone took a long exposure photo of the launch, and you see exactly the trail of the rocket. You see exactly where NASA's rocket and probe goes. Now, I've heard on Twitter and Facebook and blah, blah, blah that that's because that's how the rocket escapes. It can't go straight up. It has to reach escape velocity. Did you just facepalm? That's our thing. I don't, I don't even know what to say because that contradicts every launch NASA has done up until this one. No budget bends, just, just no. That's all for today. M. Benz, you've been smashed. Come back on Thursday where on my channel I will be hosting a debate between Professor Games and the Mind of God, which will be moderated by Jared from AT2 Productions. Thank you very much to all my subs. You don't know how much I appreciate you and an extra massive thanks to all my patrons. Their names are on screen now. If you'd like to become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash fight the flat earth. I'll see you soon, guys. And remember, stupidity's not right. Fight the flat earth. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Fight the flat earth.